Hello everybody, and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and today I will be continuing my walk through Japanese cinema. Now today reviewing the film The Sword of Doom. Before going any further into this review, please be sure to smash the like button, light up the fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, and make sure that you are subscribed and have that bell notification put on. That way you know every single time a new video or live stream goes live. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this review then, which is, of course, A Sword of Doom, which came out in 1966, directed by Kahachi Akamoto and starring Tatsuya, Tatsuya Nakadai, who, I'm going to be perfectly honest, in the very beginning of the movie, I went into it thinking that this was going to be another Toshiro Mifune-led movie. And so when I went into it, when the main character here, played by Tasuya, I was a little confused because I was like, is this Tashira Mifune and I'm just not recognizing him? I was like, I, I guess he kind of could, maybe. And then I was like, no, there's no way this is. And sure enough, later on, you start to realize that Tashira Mifune actually plays more of a supporting role, supporting character in this film, and Tatsuya Nakadai is incredibly different. Now, again, this is coming from someone who has just only recently started to dive into Japanese cinema, starting with a ton of Akira Kurosawa movies, and now branching off into other films like The Sword of Doom. And so I do apologize for not having all of the names and faces being able to be completely and perfectly matched up. But Sword of Doom from 1966 is a pretty solid movie for the most part. Let's talk about some of the things that I really liked about it. First off, I thought the story was pretty good. Uh, you deal with a character played by Tatsuya, who is a complete sociopath. He starts off from the very beginning by killing an old guy where you're kind of like, oh, that, that's the kind of movie that this is going to be. He's just going to, you know, this guy is praying by a statue saying, I pray for death. And he's like, old man, are you a pilgrim? Bah, dead. And you start to see that this is a pattern that will continue to play out through the rest of the movie and also all of these different intertwining characters and stories based on the people that he kills. And so he builds up this web of different deaths and connections and eventually towards the very end it all comes back on him where he has this moment of kind of just a psychological break he's haunted by the ghost of his past and then he goes on this massive killing spree which at the very end was actually a awesome a, a pretty cool sequence nonetheless so the writing is actually very well done the screenplay is very well put together dialogue works very well together as well acting also is very very solid again uh you have this role played by Nakadai who does an incredible job. Seriously, he he plays crazy better than anyone else. It actually took me um, until the end of the film when I saw that the Empress of the Universe, one of my Valkyrie, Tina, had mentioned that he was one of the leading roles in the film Ron from 1985. And I was like, wait, he was in that movie? Because, again, I, I don't have faces perfectly memorized yet. And then, sure enough, he played the one of the main characters. He played the, the lord who gave up his power in Ron to his sons, and I was like, this is the guy that I really liked a lot, because he had just, like, towards the end, he's he's also going crazy in that movie, and his eyes are really big, as his, you know, the world around him is, is going crazy, and I'm like, no wonder why I like this guy as much as I do, so the acting is absolutely perfect. I would have loved some more Tashira Mifune, because, again, I went in under the thought that this was gonna be more Mifune-centric, but instead, he ends up just being someone who happens to be a teacher at a specific school, who uh, has as one of its students the brother of someone that uh, Nakadai's character has killed, and so that's how he gets tied into the story. Also, of course, there's a moment between the two where he gives this really great line, and, and I'll go ahead and, and read that right now. He says, The sword is the soul. Study the soul to know the sword. Evil mind, evil sword, and that these words from the character of Shimada, played by Mifune, really stick with and haunt the character. And also, it's the first moment, really, where Nakadai's character starts to have doubt about his own abilities, and so it's a very powerful moment. So, he's definitely relevant to the story, but... You know, me being me, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of him in the actual film. Editing and pacing is all very well done. The film does not feel overly long by any means. It's only about 119 minutes. It is also incredibly well shot. So the cinematography is done by Hiroshi Morai, who, having not having his own Wikipedia page, tells me that he 
probably didn't do cinematography for a lot of movies, which is kind of surprising because, again, I thought it was very solid and very well done. Uh, let's see, Kachi Akamoto, I believe this was the first movie of his that I'd ever actually had the pleasure of seeing. I'm trying to look at his um, filmography here. And so, yeah, I've seen The Sword of Doom. I've heard great things about the movie Kill. Uh, this is something that actually Tina had just recently watched and said that I should also check out. He also did one of the Zatoichi, uh, Zatoichi, I think I finally got that right, uh, <laughs> meets Yojimbo. Ooh, ooh, this is the one that I'm actually looking the most forward to because meets Yojimbo. Guess who gets to come back and play Yojimbo? That's right, my boy Tashiro Mifune. So I'm actually really excited to, to get to that one in the series. And my first review of the first film in that series will be coming up at some point, either today or tomorrow. But Sword of Doom, and great writing, great direction. Uh, you know, all of those very key elements, I think, are all there. My biggest issue that I have with the film, as far as a negative is concerned, is I feel like the ending is quite abrupt. Now, I know that it's probably caused some conversation and controversy because it literally stops mid-swing. Like, the actual shot itself, mid-swing is, is how the movie stops. I had no problem with that. I thought that was actually a really cool moment to end on because the guy is going nuts, he's just going crazy, and you don't really need to know what else happens from there because you can product, you know, kind of see the forest for the trees, I guess. But the issue that I had with it story-wise was that they had been building up how, again, with Tashiro Mifune's character being kind of the, the leader of this one academy and having one of his students being the brother of uh, one of the persons that was killed by this character, you know, him training and learning this one move that might finally defeat the style of the character um, here uh, by Nakadai. And they're kind of like building that up, building that up, and then eventually you have him waiting after so many years with someone else who's there to help him find the character played by Nakadai and actually be able to enact his revenge. And the last time we see them is them waiting for the character to walk out. And then that moment never happens. And so, again, I think that some people probably could defend that saying, well, yeah, but that's just how his story ends because instead of him defeating Nakadai, Nakadai's character defeats himself, right? Because he, he is you know such a sociopath, because he has built up just a series of bodies and has killed people, including his wife leaving and abandoning his, his very small infant child. I mean, because all of these things have happened, he defeats himself, and so there's no need for that final moment. But I really just feel like, cinematically, there would have been more closure, I think, or at least a better story, if even during that last sequence of events, when he's going crazy and slicing people up, if they had had one shot showing those two characters who had been waiting, just even just looking and saying, oh my goodness, and realizing, like, maybe, like, I think it would have been a powerful moment if you had had the brother um, who had been waiting for him to get his revenge, had his hand on his sword, waiting, 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 and then all of a sudden, he realizes that the guy has gone insane and has broken, and then all of a sudden, his hand just slowly descends down, and, and he realizes that, I don't need to do anything, I don't need to get my revenge, like, everything is is coming back on him the way that it should. I think that that would have kind of added something to it. Now, of course, that's just me now in 2021 trying to tell someone who made an incredible film what would have been a better way to make said film. And so it's like, who am I to, to say that? But it was one issue at the end where I'm like, wait a minute, what about this guy? What about this story? Apparently, there was a planned sequel that never actually got into production. So maybe they would have been able to address it then. But since they didn't, that was one of the only glaring issues plot-wise that I really had with it. Because, again, them ending it mid-swing, mid-breakdown, uh, that, to me, totally works. A very powerful moment. But it would have been kind of nice to see them, you know, at least make reference to, at the very end, the brother character who's been waiting to get his revenge on the character played by Nakadai. But anyway... Those are my overall thoughts, solid writing, solid cinematography, solid direction, of course, great acting, and so if I had to give this film a grade, I'd give it an A-, minus. it really is a solid movie, but it is just slightly missing that story element at the end that I think would have made it an even better film and an even better story, but what are your thoughts about the Sword of Doom? Please let me know in the comment section below, and if you're liking these retro reviews on Japanese cinema, please let me know in the comment section below, especially the pinned comment where I say, thought every single time uh, that'd be awesome anyway I hope you all have a wonderful day please be sure to smash that like button hit that subscribe light up that fire button it really does help out a lot you're all amazing and beautiful people I hope you all have a wonderful day and as always God bless 
And now for a huge shout out to all of my June Patreon and Subscribestar members, Andrew Hoyle, Biffer de Hobbit, Brian P, Dion, Don Bruno de la Mancha, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father, Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, Inflamed Wood, It's a Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Carney, Laura, the Modern Major General's story, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, and rather Teresa Martin is Miss Martin Muses now, Tina Bojan, Tina B., and Washington Madranda. Thank you all very much for being my supporters on Patreon. And to my subscribe star peeps, Fast Reaction, Nosferatsu Gatsu, Stand For, John B., Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss slash The New Number Two, J. Ra, The Beer Guru, Nevananji Adams, and ZK Man. Thank you all very much for being my subscribe star members. And if you want your name shouted out at the every at the end of every video and live stream, please consider joining on Patreon or Subscribe Star. You also get access at other tiers to things like a bi-monthly podcast, bi-monthly, bi weekly, twice a month podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger, which is a lot of fun. There's also a tier in which you can join me once a month for the Chosen of Valhalla live stream where you all get to at that level, join me for discussions, talk about any projects that you might be working on, or just hang out and have a good time. It's a lot of fun. And also, too, for many of those levels, you also get access to a giveaway section on the Discord server where you get access to giveaways of things like 4K movies, digital codes, and tons of other stuff like that. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, check out the links in the description and sign up over on Patreon and Subscribestar. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.